I'd like to ask the two of you just to give your impressions of the day. What, uh, what was good about it? What should, uh, what should we uh, learn from it? And what have you learned from it? And where can we go from here with building the IASA community? Who do you want to begin? Um, you can, can start, I think. Well, this day has exceeded my expectations, I must say. Uh, <clears throat> I was hoping that we would have an occasion to enjoy and to celebrate what IASA has accomplished and to talk about what it has to do in the future in the spirit that Yasa embodies. And I've heard that all through this day. And I see that there is a lot of energy and enthusiasm about Yasa that is not yet being mobilized to the best benefit of Yasa and to your own pleasure and joy. So it is up to us to find ways of gaining the great benefit uh, from your experience, both at IASA and after IASA, to help strengthen and build the institution. But further, we cannot take for granted the future of a US membership in IASA. There are political outcomes, I can imagine, in which the whole idea of YASA as a source of trusted knowledge will be disputed. And we have to have a way of responding. I went through this once before when the Reagan administration cut the funding and we ra raised a lot of support for the Institute around the country from its alumni and that was rather early in the game which at least for one year held back the tide. After that, raising money to support the US membership without the US government contribution became an ongoing activity in which Howard and others, senior American scientists played a large role. And I was at that time in industry, the Xerox Corporation where I was working was a supporter and so on. We need to have a deep and strong root roots in the community throughout the United States. The Friends of Yasa was established to provide that kind of roots, uh, that kind of framework of support, and we've done reasonably well. But I think the what you've shown me today is there's a potential for more. And uh, I believe that through Yasa Connect, in one way or another, perhaps with it and maybe adjacent to it, we should have an organization whereby all of us can continue to have this conversation where you can meet some of your other friends on a, on a social media that, um, medium or perhaps in person on an occasion if we can organize local con meetings of YASA alumni or uh, national meeting. I mean, there's, there's a big field possible there. And what I've learned is there's a lot of interest among at least the ones of you who've come here. And so I'm, I'm gratified. I think that's what I, the major takeaway I've, uh, out of the meeting on the, from the Friends of Yasa perspective is that there's a big future and we have to find out how to exploit it and make, exploit it is maybe a negative term, but I mean, use it effectively, fertilize and grow it and Find a way to have joy, fun, and support YASA at the same time. And the, uh, as an American branch of the YASA family. Uh, and I just wanted to make one comment. I think the conversation about trust is a very important one. Going back to the foundation of YASA, I, I don't think I effectively communicated the sense in which trust was a key component. The reason that the Soviets and the, or the East and the West could work together was that there was trust because there was ownership. That is, the, there were people on the council from both sides. They, anything that came out of Yasa would have passed through their 
lenses and had been tested in those eyes. And when I was there anyway, we tried to make sure that every project had on it people from both East and West. Again, implicitly saying you should trust this because people from your side were on the team. This concerns me a little bit because if you start elaborating the ownership of Yasa to include cities and you engage the commercial world, then you somehow cut the, the, the nature of the trust. And I would be concerned about that. I think you have that council meeting, that council the, and the ownership of the product of Yasa by people on different ends of the spectrum is a key part of the operation of the Institute. And I would guard that very, very carefully. I have one final wish. I hope that 10 years from now, in 2032, I will be invited back to give a lecture about the first years of Yasa. <laughs> That sounds wonderful. Thank you. From my side, I'd like to first of all just say thank you to all you to all of you for the very rich discussions we've had today. It's been uh, tremendous to hear. There are a lot of ideas floating around and a lot of enthusiasm, as as uh, as uh, Roger's indica Roger indicated uh, from this room. I think there are different ways of dealing with um, other role players. I don't think everybody has to sit on council uh, in order to be part of uh, IASA's family. And I think there must be other ways that we can bring other role players on board. And we will certainly contemplate those and think about them and see what makes sense in that regard. But I, I think that the ideas that you floated are useful and I think we should explore them and find out whether we can deal with that in another way. The I think the RIFA conversation needs to continue, and I'm looking forward to hear what came out of the brainstorming events today and let's see what, uh, whether there's a, a golden thread there that everybody feels comfortable with that we can take forward and uh, hopefully then find the mechanism to, to, to make that happen. I, I wouldn't be too worried about the way it fits into the YASA structure at this stage of the game. I'm sure if we find the money, we will find a way to accommodate it. So one way or the other, <laughs> shouldn't be too difficult. Um, but let me just first of all say from my side that, um, and I think the point was made by Roger as well, that we do have to be careful that, that there is, and at the moment it's a little bit strained, but we need to make sure that we maintain the solidarity in council. I think it's really important for the institution and I think it's something that we should treasure and, and, and guard uh, against destroying from whoever side to, into the future. And I think we'll be working very hard together with my colleague to try and ensure that we try and keep that, uh, keep that going to the best of our ability. Um, I want us to explore some of the opportunities that have emerged in these discussions about making sure we connect people better, maybe getting I would love to see more senior people from the US visit IASA. I think it's uh, been a neglected, um, and then there's a direct flight from Washington to, to Vienna, so just keep that in mind. You don't have to, it's not too difficult. But um, I really would, I would really love to see more senior people from the US spend time at IASA under whatever mechanism we can concoct or develop. I think it's really important that we, we, we create that mechanism. I don't think we're going to get Congress to give you a tax break for your EASA income, to be honest. But uh, so I think that's not the route to go. But we need to find other ways of making this happen. And I, then also, if I may, Maggie, thanks to everybody. I'd like to express a word of thanks to Maggie, Kathy. Um, Wait until a list before. Yeah, there's a long list here. <laughs> And Roger and Monica and everybody that's worked to pull this together, um, I would really like to express my thanks to Adil and his entire team for hosting us and uh, at this wonderful venue at, uh, at, in Boston. Um, I would like to thank all of those of you that traveled to be with us here today. Uh, this is a, it's a major 
inconvenience at these times uh, for people to travel and, and spend time with us. So I really appreciate the effort that you've gone to to come here. And the wonderful YSSP talks that we had, I really appreciate those. It was a really quick overview of what was going on. Uh, so I, on top of that, my heartfelt thanks to each and every one of you for the richness of the discussion, there are many ideas that we can take back and, and I will certainly raise them at my executive meetings and, 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 and put them on the table for further deliberations there. And uh, I look forward to seeing you long before 10 years, uh, back here again and uh, in the US. But uh, please come and visit us at IASA as well when you get the opportunity. And uh, let's use the IASA Connect platform to connect more frequently and uh, to stay in touch in the interim as best as we possibly can. But uh, thank you to all of you for a wonderful day and a wonderful experience. Thank you very much. Okay. All right. Well, you stole a little of my thunder Did because I? thanking thanking people was going to be Is my closing yes yeah. oh, okay. <laughs> but I I, <laughs> but i think i think that uh, that more thanks is due um i want to again thank thank Adel and the party school of global studies and kelly bongiovanni who who provided the the venue and the motivation for for um for this event and every time I talked with Adel about this event I would come away re-enthused and just filled with great ideas and I just I can't I can't thank you enough thanks to the tech team who came in after um after like BU graduation in the middle of everybody else's graduation in the greater Boston area and uh, and made this uh, made it possible for us to see and hear each other in the room and around the world. Um, thanks to the partners. Thank you to the National Academy of Sciences and the U.S. Committee for IASA and especially to Kathy, I we're, we will be partners on in this endeavor for only a little while longer, but this is this may be the uh, the the top of the line for um, the for this partnership. Thanks to Mike Clegg, who couldn't be here. Um, the, the timing was bad for him, but he was a strong, strong supporter. Uh, thanks to Flannery Wasson from the from the National Academies who did great support for this. Thanks to Roger who supports everything in uh, for with Friends of IASA. Um, he we're, we're we're losing people. Kathy is stepping down from that job. Roger is going to um, step aside as president of Friends of IASA, but we won't let him go and uh, and i we also have to thank uh norma newrider who was the power behind the creation of friends of iasa he was the first science and technology advisor to the secretary of state he did um he helped save iasa from during one of its many crises uh, the one that happened in 2003 uh, it's hard to keep track um but uh and and thanks to Julia Poichunder, who provided a lot of behind the scenes support for everything that's happening here. Um, thanks to Monica Bauer, who is my partner, the only person who is ex as excited as I am when we find somebody else. Oh, look, a lost YSSP are found. Um, and uh, and and to Albert for supporting this, for coming to this meeting, for being such an enthusiastic participant, and um, for yeah planning your U.S. trip around this uh, to some degree, and uh, we really appreciate it. And finally, um, well, to Judy Rafa, who is another fabulous partner. How am I so lucky to get all these fabulous partners? But uh, Judy Rafa and the inspiration she brings for the Rafa Center, which I think all of us see as a possibility for a, a, a great um, the augmentation of IASA's, of IASA's um, mission. And finally, 
all of you who are here, the people who answered the call, the people who were so enthusiastic, the, the, the many people who wanted to be here and who couldn't because of COVID, because of graduations, because of so many other things. But this, this community, the community of the IASA family is, um, is an extraordinary group of people. And uh, we, we, we have great opportunities to try to uh, make, like, make more use of the joy that exists in this community. And um, the, the 50th anniversary is a great time for this. We're only beginning the 50th anniversary. We're planning to have anniversary events at professional society meetings, population so uh, association of America, AGU, AAAS, INFORMS, anywhere you think a, a 50th anniversary event should happen, give us a call, let's try to figure it out. But otherwise, thank you all for being here. And um, Kathy, Kathy would like to, to speak before we. Yeah, before, before Maggie officially adjourns us, um, on behalf of the National Academy of Sciences, I want to make sure, well, I second all the thanks that, that Maggie just gave, but I also want to thank Maggie because she did an incredible amount of work with us.